Hey everyone. So uh, thank you for joining me on Love to Cook and Cook with Love. This is Mariposa from Mariposa's Kitchen. Today we'll be talking about picadillo con papas. So what is picadillo con papas? So for some of you who've already seen my video, you know what it is, but it's a, it's a basic uh, Mexican recipe of ground beef and potatoes. It is spiced with a common uh, South Texas Mexican spice blend, which is uh, ground cumin, garlic, onion, some tomato sauce, and some salt and pepper. It's basic, it's easy, and honestly, it's delicious. So the thing about this recipe, there are a lot of us who are familiar with this recipe, with this, with this meal because it was one of the staples that we grew up as, with as, as far as, you know, uh, those of us who grew up in South Texas or as, um, you know, in poor Mexican families. It was considered, you know, a, a meal of the poor folk, I guess you could say. But honestly, it, it, it brings out memories of our childhood. It's a delicious meal when it's made correctly. It is a thing that you eat when you go, gosh, I remember my mother, my grandmother, my tia, you know. It's just uh, one of those trigger foods, I guess you could call it. it uh, it's heartwarming and it's soul refreshing. And it's so simple. So um, we'll talk about more, more about the recipe in a second. But, you know, please refer to my video, Picadillo con Papas, on YouTube for starters. And I'm going to address some questions and some comments that were made via my video. So first of all, uh, Sabrina. <laughs> she made this for her boyfriend and it is now his favorite dish. You know, it, it, it is so delicious and I totally get it. I've made this for my family, my husband, my brother-in-laws, you know. And even though we've come such a long way in life and, and the things that we taste and eat, but this is one of those meals that you just make and you go back to and you go, this is what it's all about. It's just so delicious. And again, this is not something that I made up. This is a recipe that has been passed down generation through generation. And it's, it, it's, it's a no fail. It really is. And I hope you get to try it. Um, Maeve, who also commented on the video said her husband grew up eating this dish and now she makes it and he's happy with it. And again, this is one of the things that just takes us back to our childhood, to memories, to, to simpler times when having just this nice warm meal that hit your belly and made everything right at the end of the day. It's one of those meals. I hope you get to taste it. I know Victoria commented on my video and also said that her house smells so good. This is true about this video. When you make this recipe, gosh, your your home just smells of, uh, you know, the ground comino and the onions and the garlic and everything smushed together. And it just it's a wonderful scent. I know when I made it when my kids were little, they'd walk in and go, Oh my gosh, what are we eating? And they'd look in the pot and go, oh, Okay. And I had to make a big batch with my kids were little. I had three kids. They were, you know, born very close together in age. And I'm talking like four pounds of ground beef, you know, like eight potatoes. And of course, all the, the soupy mixture that comes in between and a big load of tortillas to help along the way. Um, Luther made this and it's now one of his favorite dishes. Luther, thank you so much for for watching my videos, for sharing my videos and the completion of my recipes on your Instagram uh, place. I'm not really familiar with Instagram, forgive me, but I, um, it's your Instagram page. Whatever it is, thank you so much. Uh, I, I really appreciate it and I'm glad that you like it. So another question, how many servings do you get from the two pounds? So my recipe uses two pounds of ground beef and, and about four-ish potatoes. You want to get four medium to large potatoes. Uh, this particular amount will serve about six people, a nice good meal. So heads up on that. 
You can double it, you can half it, you know. I make this in a 10 inch cast iron skillet. The 10 inch is the base of the skillet. It does kind of flange out to a little bit more than maybe about 14 inches, but it's a, it's a really nice meal to cook in my cast iron skillet. I also suggest that you use a bigger skillet, like a, a casserole skillet. Here you can maybe add more, you can make it a little bit more soupy. When we were young, my mom would vary it. She would make it either nice, a really nice thick consistency and we would eat it like that or she'd make it a little soupy and it'd be like a soupy dish that you could eat like a soup. And it was just absolutely delicious. My mom tried to vary the ways that we ate it. Um, and again, this is a poor man's meal, but it was just the most wonderful thing, so it didn't really matter. She could put a, a big slice of bread on our plate and would pour the picadillo con papas over the bread, and we would eat it with the bread underneath it. Oh my God, it was to die for. You could toast the bread with some seasoning on the bread, and then, you know, put the picadillo on top of that, and it was just wonderful. Or you know, eat it nice and thick with some tortillas. Gosh, it was just wonderful. I remember, you know, my father, my siblings, I'm not a big uh, hot sauce eater. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't have that tolerance. I make it. I make wonderful hot sauces, but they would swirl the hot sauce into the picadillo con papas and then eat it, scoop it up with your tortillas. I mean, there's so many different things you could do to eat this. Uh, just giving you some ideas here. Um, let's see what else here. I'm looking at a list that my husband made for me of things, you know, that were brought up online. Um, Jimmy mentioned that she subbed squash for the potatoes. What else can be used? Oh my gosh, so many different things can be used. I also use pasta with same recipe, but use like some pasta shells. Oh my gosh. So what you'd want to do is, um, before maybe cooking the meat or you know what you want to do is season the meat I don't know there's a couple ways that I do it uh, before cooking the meat put some oil in your pan heat it up with some onion and then put your pasta shells in there and uh, make them nice and toasty then take those out set them aside and then do all the recipe part with your ground beef and then you add your shells back you put your liquid into your dish once it reaches that boiling point, you want to let it simmer and you'll cook the recipe down until the pasta is ready, which is as the pasta says to be cooked, which is like maybe 10 to 12 minutes, depending on the pasta. Oh, it comes out wonderful. And the nice thing about using pasta is the pasta absorbs all of the flavors from, you know, the spices and the, the low soupiness of the dish. Absolutely wonderful. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put that recipe out here as a video soon. And, and again, it's just the same thing except you substitute pasta. Other things you can add to the dish of picadillo con papa itself. Add some green beans. You know, just put some green beans in there, let it cook. Some corn. Um, again, squash is wonderful. This recipe, you can incorporate so many different things or substitute so many different things. You know, it, it's really... Uh, viewer's choice at this point. I've done it so many different ways, but gosh, yes to all of the above. I'm just going to say that. Um, so someone asked about using this as a filling. 100% yes. What you want to do is make the recipe as a the thicker part of it, you know, nice and thick and put it in like an empanada, um, you know, recipe. I know that there's, I, I believe it's uh, Luther who does this and actually <laughs> entered a contest with this and got second place. But make empanadas, uh, I believe the comments were, it was eyes rolled to the back of the head, delicious in empanadas. I would certainly go there, put it in a pie, you know, put a pie crust, put it in the oven, bake it and serve it, maybe put some cheese on it. Again, so many different things you can do with this. What you want to do first is just get down that recipe, make it, and then vary it, make it soupier, make it thicker, you know, and however else you want to take it from there, please do it. Um, another way you can also do this is 
make a, a some cornbread mix in and then in your cast iron skillet you're gonna put a layer of, of your cornbread mix in there then put a layer of your picadillo con papas put some quesadilla cheese on top or mozzarella whatever cheese you love and then put the rest of your uh, cornbread mix on top of that put some jalapenos in there you know and make a, a version of Mexican cornbread oh my gosh you'd be so happy with yourself for doing something like that so um, how do you eat it I mean I think I've mentioned eating it as uh, just this, a, a thick nice casserole maybe with a, a, a pasta on the side I mean not maybe pasta but a salad on the side make it soupy just add a little bit more liquid you might need to increase your salt uh, a little bit if you're gonna make it kind of soupy but it's wonderful as a soup if you put the potatoes in there and the ground beef and then add some extra veggies gosh I, I think you will be uh, patting yourself on the shoulder for doing something like that so what side of skillet a uh, size of skillet uh, I've already told you I use my 10 inch cast iron skillet again it's 10 inch on the bottom but it, it kind of uh, opens up to be about a 14 inch skillet um, use a, a nice big casserole skillet um, if you want uh, someone's asking for how to fit it into a 10 inch skillet uh, I mean, that's what I'm using but I'm thinking that they might be using something smaller instead of like a cast iron which is bigger um, my suggestion is if you want to make a smaller recipe of this just cut it in half that's it you know everything as it's done in my video but just half and you'll make yourself a nice amount for about four people but I don't know why you'd want to do that just make the whole thing and put some in the freezer and save some for later you know it freezes very well um, in my video uh, I drain some of the juice you know when you when you um, cook ground beef it releases a lot of fats and I release that he's like you know why are you really taking all this flavor out and Dennis I just want to let you know there's enough flavor in there I've been making this recipe for years draining some of that out has not impacted the flavor I think because I add the spices and I let it cook in first those spices get absorbed and so then when I have to remove that extra fat I'm really lo losing nothing because the flavor has not gone away it's still wonderful and either way at some point you've got to drain some beef um, I like to cook the spices and everything all together first I like in my mind the way I see it the spices the flavors adhere better this way this all goes into my motto of love to cook and cook with love when I'm cooking I cook with all of my heart and I pay attention to the way I cook I pay attention to the way the spices are treated to the way the food is treated in the pan it matters to me every little step matters and I appreciate that you made that observation but this is just what has worked for me and if you read the comments on my recipe on YouTube the video I don't think I've failed anyone in this uh, endeavor so do what whatever works best for you this is what works best for me so uh, Gonzalo asks how many servings for two pounds of meat again this is this is like about six to seven servings I base this on how my children ate and again I only had three kids and my husband and I usually didn't eat until I knew they had eaten everything but um, it's because you add the potatoes and because it's got a, a liquid mixture that comes in I would say it's about six really good servings maybe seven you know um, of course we add sides and everything that'll make a difference so I hope that helps and then Hallie is asking how much tomato sauce I buy one of those small cans of tomato sauce um, honey can you get me a can of tomato sauce I'm sorry I don't have that here with me but I use most of a can of tomato sauce you can certainly use a whole can these small cans that they sell at the stores they're about eight ounces they are exactly eight ounces actually I'm looking at the can right now and I don't know why but I never use the whole can I guess I use about seven ounces maybe six ounces um, I think if you if you overdo the tomato it might be a little bit tart but then you might like it that way 
but in all honesty, I've never used a whole eight ounce can of tomato sauce. I use most of it. I hope that helps. I'll, I'll tell you what, I use about a quarter inch from the top less, you know, I use all of it up, up, up until a quarter inch. I hope I'm making sense. Anyway, that's, that's how I use it and, and it works perfectly. It's wonderful. I hope y'all get a chance to try this. And again, this is two pounds of ground beef. This is about four to maybe five medium potatoes. This is two teaspoons of ground cumin, three, a, a tablespoon of uh, powdered garlic or ground garlic, garlic powder. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I use a, a fresh onion. I use a medium onion, chop it all up and um, four cups of water. Follow the recipe on the video. I, I, I would love to. One day I'll, I'll walk through it during a podcast. I'll just kind of make it and walk through it with you. But I just, I'm going to refer you to my video right now. It's the best thing, best way for you to learn it. And I hope you try it. Again, this is a simple meal. Um, but it is so delicious. And again, it just kind of, for most of us, I know folks maybe my age, it ignites memories of when we were young, just a safe time, times of warm, beautiful hugs from our mothers and our grandmothers and and full bellies. It's just a really, really cool, nice South Texas Mexican meal to try. And I love to cook it and I cook it with love. And I hope you all enjoy it. Take care, everyone.